I will go ahead and call the policy procedure committee meeting order January 2nd, 2020. Nine o'clock. Call the roll, please. Barons? Here. All? Here. Ms. Haggard? Awful? Sticknot? Here. Sure? Yep. Everybody has a copy of the agenda in front of them. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Alt, second. Mr. Sticknot. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Are there any public comments this morning? Committee chair reports, Mr. Alt, Highway, Finance. We have a resolution for Bob Colbert coming up on the County Light Road with uh, Milk, in Milk, Milk's Grove Township. That will be County Line 4 County. What about Finance Committee? Do you know anything about I, that? I haven't been informed of anything other than I guess we're going to still meet next, next uh, Thursday. All right. Mr. Barron's management and judicial. Management, we're going to have fertilizer bid and regular reports, judicial regular reports. Okay. Mr. Sickman, tax. Nothing much other than the standard department head reports, and we may be looking over the micro brewery ordinance. How are you going to look at it? On the paper that I got. <laughs> I was hoping we're going to do that here. We can do that here, and then I won't have to do it. <laughs> Good. All right, Mr. Safety, <coughs> EMA report. For the past month, uh, EMA participated in a couple of parades, one in Monsego, one in Milford. I've uh, been working on a hazard mitigation plan, as I've mentioned before. I also went to a hazard mitigation class. Um, IEMA and FEMA uh, finally got together, put together a class on how to write a hazard mitigation plan. Um, that was a two-day class up in uh, DeKalb. DeKalb. Uh, an EMAT committee uh, earlier in the month, that's just a telephone conference call, but it's a big work committee online for IESMA. I've been working on getting started on IPAWS, Integrated Public Alert Warning System. Uh, it's in the budget, so I'm moving forward with it. There's an application process to start with with the federal government. So I've been working with some of the partners here and also some of the contractors to figure out exactly what we need and know what contractors can do with us. I attended the city's city of Watsika's hazard mitigation plan meeting, and I scheduled a couple, well, one training and one exercise with the National Weather Service. The training will be the, the annual weather spotting training that I have. That'll be in March, um, I want to say 11th. I got time to double check that. Uh, and then I'm going to have a tabletop exercise with the National Weather Service on the 28th of May. So that's what I've been doing over the past month. Looking forward, I'm going to have, a, I haven't done this in a little bit here, but I'm going to have an advisory meeting for emergency management uh, this January, where I bring in the community, the community partners, everybody that signs the EOP, um, to get everybody updated on the EOC itself and our emergency operations plans. Uh, I want to have a flash flood and tornado tabletop exercise. So I'm going to start, I want to do that before spring, so I'm going to start prep work for that. and finish a draft of the hazard mitigation plan. Did you tell us when the next LEPC meeting is? That would be January 14th. We have county board meeting that day. Yes, in the afternoon. <laughs> Everybody you, is welcome? Chairman. Of course, it's a public meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, update on flood matters in Iroquois County. On December 19th, there was a uh, meeting of the Indiana KRBC YRBC Technical Advisory Committee at the Thayer Farm over near Thayer, Indiana, that was attended by Mr. Ducat. And he told me that he was very impressed with what went on there. They were basically wanting to survey the farm and get some ideas about projects that are going to have to be completed there in order to allow that farm to be 
flooded with water when whenever there's a flood it'll be like a storage area to, to help reduce the amount of water that's going downstream right away so uh, next meeting of the KRBC YRBC is January 16th and I'm planning to attend that meeting uh, the only other thing that's on the agenda in Iroquois County is the uh, Iroquois County River Conservancy District. That'll be on the ballot on March 17th, and uh, between now and that time, we'll be wanting to uh, promote that and make sure that everybody within the boundary to that district are aware of what it's all about and uh, turning out to vote. So that's, that's it for that. So we'll move on to Senate Bill 75. Mr. Munion, do you have any updates for us on that? Well, in typical Illinois fashion, there's no guidance yet on the Transparency Act training. So we're waiting on that. When we get that, then we'll be able to perform what we'd have. Okay. Because we know that it will. We're confident that it'll exceed that, but we don't want to try it until we get their guidelines. So when Illinois gets that, we'll we'll start making plans with the departments to get things arranged for training. On the uh, <coughs> policies that we discussed, um, their suggestion is that we would like to meet with uh, whoever handles the policies for the county, set up a meeting, bring the drug policies, and then we would like to <coughs> entertain the idea of altering the policy that's already existing instead of trying to create a brand new one. So we can take out what's no longer uh, pertinent in Illinois and put in a new policy. It's a lot more fluid. And at that point, once we get the policies created, then uh, at your guys' convenience, we can set up a meeting for the training the trainers. And then when new people come in, you'll have uh, training available for them within your 30-day window. Okay. Anybody have any questions about that? I guess not. Thank <coughs> you. Uh, next on the agenda is approving the policy for alcohol and drug use in the county workplace. At the last county board meeting, we approved establishing that. And uh, as we looked at the matter further since that time, we find that we do have a policy in place. <coughs> but it needs to be reviewed and updated. And uh, that's what you have in front of you right now. There's a couple of things. For example, in the beginning of the second paragraph, at the end of the first sentence, it talks about illegal drugs. We're going to probably need to take the word illegal out, since there are some drugs that are now legal. And then further down, two, three, four, at the beginning of the fourth paragraph, it talks about the employer reserves the right to require drug testing for cause or reasonable suspicion of being under the influence. Mr. Devine recommended that we add the next down to the next sentence. Reasonable suspicion includes, but is not limited to. At the moment, those are the changes that I that I know about. Uh, I was hoping that Mrs. Schippert would be at the meeting this morning since she had gone to that seminar to see if there are any other things in here that <coughs> needed to be changed and so forth. Is this policy something that you want to take to look over, Myron? Sure. Yeah. 
So in the second paragraph, we can't specify they shouldn't be under the influence of illegal drugs? Well, they, we don't want them under the influence of legal drugs either. Okay. You can say legal or illegal, or you can just strike out the word illegal. Okay. The divine yeah. suggested yeah. striking out the word illegal. But under the uh, influence of alcohol or drugs. Okay. If, if we wanted to. Okay. To do that. And then the other one that I mentioned down by the fourth paragraph. I don't have a copy of it in front of me. Um, does it talk to... You should have a copy of all of this. I don't have it in front of me. Okay. <laughs> I know I have a copy of it. So. Okay. Um, does this have anything... Okay, there's what I'm looking for. Uh, would it be worthwhile on the bottom of the page, violations of the policy would lead to disciplinary action up to and including immediate termination of employment or if the incident is self-reported requires participation in substance abuse rehabilitation or treatment programs such as such violations may also have legal consequences. So, would this be worthwhile for the county to potentially outline because if it's self-reported for the sub substance abuse rehabilitation or treatment program, whose responsibility is that? At what point is the county is at what point it is is it the employees? I don't know if I have the have the answer for that. I don't moment. I don't think I have that answer either, but I'm just looking for protection of the county at this point. I mean the insurance is going to be involved, yes, at that point, but there's a certain point to where it may be employer required versus the employee to pay co-insurance and co pays and such. Does our insurance cover mental health and substance abuse? Yes, I believe it does. Yes. Um, so the so rehab would be covered by insurance? No, I'll have to check on that. Okay. Yeah, just to confirm it. I think there's a lot of things in here. This is this policy was approved back in 2013 when we had gone through this whole book. And I suppose a person could make an argument that we probably ought to be looking at it again sometime to not do this in the future. But that's part of it aside. I think <coughs> right now it's important to look at it at this particular one in view of the situation that we're in. I'm just looking through here real quick. I thought I had seen somewhere in here that also says that employees that are covered by a <coughs> union contract, that, that that has to you know, play into this. And I'm not finding it right off the top of my head here. Reading paragraph three, the legal use of prescribed drugs is permitted on the job, um, and it speaks to the engagement <coughs> of other individuals within the workplace. Um, some of our departments specifically deal with the public. I don't know if we need to broaden that. Well, I guess that's I guess that's a good question. I think it probably also depends upon how you view view things. The people that deal with the public and even with, or even with fellow employees, you go back to the first paragraph there, where it says the employees are required to report to the work in an appropriate mental and physical condition. I think to me that's. That's a pretty clear statement and a pretty important statement as to what's expected of every employee. So if you want to, if you, you know, something like what you're suggesting kind of expands on that really, doesn't it? Yes. I don't know if it's necessary or not. 
stuff that the department had to, you know, that's their responsibility. If the department head is a, is a, is affected, then I guess it's the responsibility of one of the employees in the in the department to. Well, it's too extreme. But it's, I mean, it's, that's what I get out of this. Is it's everybody kind of is in the same boat, you know. Obviously, the department heads have certain responsibilities, but if, you know, it's also the employees' responsibilities if they observe somebody that is not capable of performing their job because of any of this, then it's their, their responsibility to bring that to the attention of whomever to get whatever action is required taken. So I think that's, again, a byplay that stands out in this and, and something that... <coughs> yeah. All I'm doing at this point is, that while you were doing this, is uh, since there seems to be a little bit of continued work after the fact at this point, I was just bringing up a couple of points uh, as I was rereading it that may be useful to bring to the table. I, I'm with you 100%. I think this is something that we ought to go through and get pretty well satisfied all, amongst all of us that that's what we want, that it covers all the bases and all those kind of things. So uh, we don't have to approve it today. We can. You know, we can postpone that until next month. Uh, Myron has, wants to go through that with the insurance people and see what changes they might recommend that we put in here. I think that's good. Uh, does that sound like a reasonable course of action? <clears throat> Nobody has any thoughts? Well, I agree. We want the insurance fully behind what we have as a policy. Right. Well, not only that, but we want the policy to be right. clearly stated mm -hmm. for everybody involved. And I think, like I said, that to me, you can't put all this on the department heads, especially if the department there is the one that's guilty here of the infraction here. You know, I think it's got to be everybody involved in the whole business. I don't know that we've ever had any incidents of, of any kind that apply to any of this, but doesn't mean there wouldn't be a first time. Do you want to make a motion to table this till next month? I will make that motion. Is there a second? For all persons that motion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. Okay. We will table that until next month accordingly. Next on the agenda is the microbrewery ordinance. Mr. Tayman is here and has some ideas and some thoughts about what we have. Uh, what, what you're looking at is something that I initially prepared based upon what I thought the ideas I had from him comments other people have made and what I saw from ordinances from other entities around the state, even out, out of state. And I reviewed it with Mr. Devine and then I reviewed it with Mrs. Damon and uh, we're still in the process, I guess, of considering some changes. Yeah, then, then I kept sending the email, so. what about this, what about this, what about this, so then I thought it would be better to say no more. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you to, okay. if you make your comments, All right. Um, I'll give you an update, too, on the brewery. We're building. Uh, <coughs> we, we've uh, got the floor in and the heat in the floor, and we've uh, put uh, the plywood up on the interior, and now we sprayed it with insulation. Then we're going to get the batting from Morton and put that in. And, um, and we're doing a lot of the work ourselves. The brothers from uh, Gilman are the carpenters, but... It's nice because our son-in-law is the architect and he's there helping so it's going together and he's very meticulous so it's going together exactly like he wants it and it's really it's really going to be a beautiful venue. I will say my husband though he wants uh, our son-in-law wants it to go clear to the ceiling so he can hang these Edison lights from the rafters and and uh, so they put these giant pieces of plywood up there and my husband came in that night and he's trying to get a glass out of the cupboard and he's like he can't lift his arms. 
So he thinks he's working harder than he did when he was farming. Um, the septic, we had to put a separate septic line in for the wastewater because it's considered a food product. And then Ryan Wheeler came out and uh, measured the, and it, the, there wasn't enough fall between the septic tank and the, the leach bed. So uh, uh, Jim Bulk had to empty the thousand gallons and dig it up and raise it three inches. But we got it done. and. And then uh, the state, uh, we finally found somebody in the state, at the state level, that can answer our questions, which was tricky. Um, but she said, since we're doing cider and beer, we cannot self-distribute. One of, we were going to have a tasting room, but also part of our focus was going to be to try to get this product out to local, well, anybody, to any liquor stores or, or, or restaurants that wanted to serve it. But now we have to go through a distributor for that, which means they get to pick where it goes and we don't make as much off of it so the focus is going to be more on the tasting room and bringing people to iroquois county for the tasting room because that's what we can actually participate in because of the state law and the um uh harvest ale house in uh, paxton is really interested in doing a product launch for us in september when they have a swine and dine festival so that's our goal is to be find a distributor that will do that take it there for us and uh, be ready to go by then and our <clears throat> son and daughter were both music majors in college and they dug out grandma's accordion from the basement and our son picked up one at the at a garage sale and so we they're hoping to be good enough to play an Oktoberfest so and that would be our big opening uh, event we've only um, out of the eight people we have three kids and they're all married so there's eight of us involved We've only had one major argument, and that was about TVs. My husband wears two hearing aids, so he doesn't want any TVs in the bar. He's been in too many restaurants where he can't hear people because of the background noise. So there's four of us that say we want TVs and four who don't. And we've gone around and around, and finally my husband put an end to it at Christmas. He said, here's the deal. You get one vote for every dollar you're contributing. So he won. <laughs> end of conversation. Uh, so that's, that's where we're at. We had a few. Um, if you have it in front of you, we had a few things we wanted. Uh, on number two, we just wanted to add the word can and glass there uh, by the bottle. Can, glass, grout. Those, those are in there. Mm, okay, you put those in. Okay, good. And um, and in, this, in the back, did you add hard ciders to the... Yep. Okay, because that's done. Okay, that's good. So then... One, one change that I... Let me interrupt you. One change that I did make was I changed the first paragraph a little bit around. I said... Change it to a facility solely manufacturing any and or all of the following okay. alcoholic beverages. And okay. then I got craft beer, hard cider, or beer okay. listed. Very good, very so. good. So the the concern that I didn't think about until we heard back from the uh, brewery that we contacted, we contacted a brewery owner in Urbana and asked what he thought of it. And he didn't email me until this morning. I think they were busy with New Year's and things. He was concerned about the... 64 ounce limit because he said it's going to be very hard to keep track of number one people come up and they buy four beers and and once for their wife and once for their sister-in-law and then they take them outside and drink them in the orchard and how are you going to keep a tally of who's had how many ounces of what uh to make sure nobody has more than 64 ounces the other issue too is my son who's 6'5 and weighs 240 pounds can drink quite a bit more than his wife who weighs half as much as he does. So, uh, and then too, the mead is 15% and the beer is about five. So 64 ounces, if you drank 64 ounces of that mead, you'd be unconscious. So um, what we were thinking was, I wanted to show you, state law covers that. And the way they cover it is, they, they say public intoxication is not illegal, but, if you serve alcohol to anybody, of course, state law has a whole lot of, it's big, that one provision. But, but if you serve alcohol to anybody who causes property damage or a public disturbance, uh, then you're in trouble. And it seems like since it's covered at the state level, maybe we wouldn't have to keep track of how many ounces each person consumes. This this uh, 64 ounce thing is something that I took from a, an ordinance from another county. County. So do you know how and they how they keep? Because it would be one thing keeping track of somebody's tab, 
but even then they might be buying for other people. And then if people pay cash. Well, there, there's so many scenarios. Somebody could come to your place and already be a right. little bit over the limit, so to speak. And after they had one beer, we'd want to shut them off or, I mean, or tell them they couldn't think, have any. Yeah. I think really most of the responsibility does rest with the people that are either supervising or involved mm -hmm. in serving the liquor that they see somebody that's right. obviously had too much. Mm -hmm. Why? You know, I think that's a responsibility that you have. It's hard to put that into words. It is. And I uh, think the state has tried here. Um, uh, any person licensed under any state or local law to sell alcohol, like liquor, whether or not a citizen or resident of the state who in person or through an agent causes the intoxication by the sale or gift of alcoholic liquor to any person who, while intoxicated, causes injury to any person or property in the state of Illinois, thereby submits such licensed person and if an individual, his or her personal representative to the jurisdiction of the courts of the state for a cause of action arising under the subsequent, under subsection A above, <laughs> which I suppose covers it. So that's, that was our, I think the biggest, our biggest concern was just trying to keep a record of that. Especially like at an yeah, Oktoberfest where you maybe had 40 people ordering yeah. to try to make sure who's had, and then to follow them outside and see, okay, who are they giving this beer to and what's your name? And I have to put, you know, I just think. And then Tom, here. I, I think, let, let's, let me just make a few more comments on mm -hmm. that because I think it's something we're going to probably have to look at pretty carefully there. But I don't yes. think, I don't think that we were expecting you to keep track of exactly how much each person has, I think that's probably an undue burden. Right. But I, uh -huh. think it's, I think it's intended to be more in terms of a guide mm -hmm. and as well as saying or identifying the responsibility that people, what they would consume as reasonable mm -hmm. and not, I mean, as you pointed out in the example, there are different individuals that are able to consume more than others. Right. Uh, I can tell you for myself. Today, I probably can't consume very much before I'll feel the effects of it. But mm -hmm. when I was about 21 years old, I didn't <laughs> put anybody under the table. Uh -huh. Yes, and that's what uh, Tom said from, he said, uh, here's, here's his, he said, I looked it over, he said this this morning, there's a couple of issues. The restrictions in the amount served <laughs> is redundant with the state liquor code. Um, ABV average makes a huge difference, meaning the amount of alcohol uh, I can elaborate if need be. Plus, many times a tab doesn't reflect consumption of the person who actually started the tab. This could uh, be an unforeseen liability issue, was, his, was what he said. This is from the guy that runs the brewery in Urbana. So that, that's, uh, before that, I just thought, oh, 64 ounces is reasonable, and I didn't even think about it until I got his email this morning, and I thought, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. No, 64 ounces is almost a six pack of beer. Yeah, and honestly, if you drank 64 ounces of mead, you'd be unconscious. Um, so, and, and our, we don't want anybody drunk. No, I'm just, sure you yeah. don't, and I, mm -hmm. we don't either, but mm -hmm. I could, trying to come up with appropriate words. Right. I'm not even sure I am co entirely comfortable with what the state has, mm -hmm. because I think that leaves a lot of open doors. To yeah, so I don't know how, I don't, I'm, I'm not so okay <coughs> sit down. I don't, I don't yeah. know how we address that. I don't know. Well. How, what's the rule for? Here, here's, here's the thing. I guess we have some time if you're not going to be opening up until late next yeah. summer. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, we were wanting to get something established right. and recognizing it can always be amended or changed, mm -hmm. but something that at least gets the ball rolling and gets Things more into focus and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe this, maybe this 64 ounce thing is something we're going to have to kick around for a while. Because I don't, I think we have to have county before we can get the state licensing. I think county. Well, a lot hinges on the county. Uh, uh, what's the what's the rule for restaurants in Iroquois County that serve liquor? Is there a limit on theirs? Yeah, I don't have it here in front of me. It's in our, we have a, we have a separate, which is referred to here, we have a separate uh, section in the county code on alcoholic liquor. But, mm -hmm. you know offhand, Lisa? I, I don't know that there is any restrictions in our ordinance. Um, I'm not 100% positive, but 
I can remember reading it, and I don't really remember there being any maybe we specific could, restrictions. Well, because that'd be awful hard if somebody gets there, you know, if the bar opens at three o'clock and they stay till midnight, they can drink a lot and mm -hmm. get drunk. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know how to. I don't know how, and if unless we can look at what the restaurants do. I think we're probably better off leaving it the way the state has it. Yeah, I'm not comfortable with the 64 ounces. Well, yeah. I understand. I'm not. I'm not advocating either one at the moment. I'm you know, thinking we need to kick it around a little bit because the purpose. The purpose is just to try and identify the responsibility of not, you know, having people become overly inebriated. Definitely. And, and we have other farm buildings out there and renters that are using the other buildings. We don't want anybody walking around our neighbor's combine that's been drinking for sure. I mean, um, and we have enough concerns right now with the legalization of marijuana yes. about people who don't maybe driving and under the influence and uh, various legal officials around the state are anticipating an increase in the number of accidents and other incidents so because of that mm -hmm. so i mean it just all plays into the same kind of thing and well i know this is being drafted to help them get going but while we're doing it i mean there are some microbreweries that do whiskey and stuff too should we just incorporate that in at the time well, this is intended not only to for, for their them, but for uh, if there was another or more people that wanted to establish a similar operation. This isn't necessarily just so, being drafted I mean, for them. Yeah, that's a good point. Whiskey Acres up at uh, that's on the farm. Where's that up north somewhere? That's a farm brewery. And that's just whiskey. Decal. Yeah. Have you been there? I hear it's pretty cool. I, I mean, while we're at it might be time to just do it all and it may encourage somebody else in the county to open something like that well I don't know if that's something you want I guess that'd be the first step what do you want it to include well if you're doing a microbrewery one it should include any possible microbrewery I would assume otherwise we'll have to revisit it when if and when someone else decides to do that well, somebody can always come and apply for variance to the ordinance too. I mean, there's no no uh, limitation on that part of it. If there's something in there that somebody wants to do that is, isn't clearly identified or prohibited, they can apply for a variance. I, I'm not against putting whiskey in there either. I'm just, you know, uh, to me, my, you know, I. My understanding that microbrewery started out from people wanting to make their own beer primarily. A lot of people were doing it in their homes and it's kind of grown from that. And now you've got quite a few microbreweries. There's an article in the Chicago Tribune today that talks about the growth of the microbreweries has led Chicago area to become one of the mm -hmm. largest beer places in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's, to just, me, where this came from, and that's kind of what I identify as. Just uh, for clarity, do we have to put a line in here saying that this is not meant to regulate anyone that makes beer for their own consumption, personal consumption? Because there are people that do that, too. They have a little kit, they make it, they drink it themselves, they don't distribute it at all. I don't think we need that in here. I, I think okay. that, again, this is... Uh, when you look at the definition, it has to do with people who don't <coughs> get to sell it, market it, distribute it, whatever. Okay. So that's, that's the only ones that it applies to. This process has really given me an appreciation for people that work in county government. This is complicated. I never attended as terrible attended yeah. county meetings before and think, wow, yeah, it seems like something. everything we do is complicated we <laughs> make it more complicated when we start thinking about all of this it's and all of that all the things you, yeah sometimes we go a little too far maybe mm -hmm. i guess but. 
you have any other questions we can help you with? Or? Um, do distributors have to have a state license? Uh, I, uh, do you know Ross Sorensen that uh, runs the hops farm and he's got a hops farm in here? Yeah, Ross, is, so, Ross is my neighbor. Okay, he says distributors are one step below the mafia in Illinois. I don't know if that's true or not. But, um, so I, I don't know much about distributors. We'll have to find somebody that wants to take us on, number one, when we're really a non, we don't know. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know if you could just start your own distributor. So. I don't, I think it's Did you want to be a distributor very complicated. Now? <laughs> I think that I've heard the rumor that there's one brewery in Champaign-Urbana that rents a three foot by three foot square to a distributor and then takes their liquor and sets it in that square and then takes it where they want it. I, I And it's legal. I can't, first of all, I can't believe that's legal. And second, I, I, I don't know. Um, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Just right, thought it was that, an interesting way to get around the law. That has something to do with the state. That's probably not anything that the county's. Made <laughs> yes, but, so I, I think Harvest Ale House will have a distributor that that does their liquor. So maybe they'll at least handle that opening we want to do. And beyond that, I don't know what we'll do for distributor. We'll just focus on selling it here in the county. We're not going to serve food, but. Um, uh, Anarga is close and they do, uh, Francie's Pizza is really good and they deliver, so we'll just put the menus on the tables and, and we're going to try to find food trucks in the county for the come and <coughs> hope that takes care of it. And we're not going to have television. <laughs> so. I wonder if you're going to give her the answer. <laughs> they all got real quiet when he said per, per dollar spent. And they're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Anybody else have questions? <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. One thing before you go, where exactly do we, this business that, that the state has about, about this, where exactly are we beginning and ending with that here? Well, the state law? Yeah. Well, I think since it's they were- On the were, second page. Yeah, I read, I was, what I read out loud was on the second page. Let's see if I can find it. Down there, B. Um, yeah. And then it refers to A, which really goes into more detail. But it's pretty much saying that if. Well, that's why I was a little confused because A is pretty long. Yes. Um, <laughs> and it covers everything. A, start, a covers the first page and the most amount of damages page. and. Um, yeah. I don't know that we want to go into that much verbiage, do we? Mm -hmm. But this is the state code, so it is it is covered already by state at state level. Um, uh, the woman at the state that I talked to said, if you do anything with guns, liquor, or tobacco, you're just going to be buried in regulations. And you, you have to talk to somebody there to help you through it. Um, it may be that we could just, we could take the 64 ounces out and just refer to this. Yes. Uh, incorporating mm -hmm. all the verbiage in there. Mm -hmm. I, and I have the website or the uh, URL um, <coughs> address there where I found that. Yes, yeah, and that's what Tom said at, uh, at the 25 o'clock brewing. He said since it's covered already in the state code, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to address it at the county level. Well, again, I, I, I understand that, but again, I, to me, I, I, one of the reasons I felt it was important to put this in there was to identify the issue or the responsibility mm -hmm. that we have. Very much so. So that, that's really all that's intended to do. And there, there are so many scenarios that will make it impossible for you to be able to keep track of. Right. You know, who's drinking what as mm -hmm. well as who comes on the premise that's already had several drinks mm -hmm. or, or what they've had to drink. I mean, who knows? Mm -hmm. And who has a lower tolerance. And, yeah. Right. So. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming this morning. Yes. Thanks for listening. <laughs>
passing it or changing it? Or <coughs> what are you asking? Anything. What would you like to do? Well, I think we ought to maybe change it to up, up in that 64 ounce level, then refer it to Chris Wells, and then refer it to Jim Devine again. That we need to include whiskey and hard liquor at this time, or that'd be up to Jim's option. I think he wanted to add that in. He's going to ask what we want to. That's all he's going to say. What do you want? He's well, then Mr. Say. put it all together so we wouldn't have to redo it at another day. At distillery, I think whiskey was the whiskey at the distillery. Yeah, okay, at the distillery yeah. of some of them. Unless you have a distillery. Uh, license and uh, what in the <clears throat> in this license? This this refers just to that group. Yeah, group. could have one separate ones, but some people may have to have both of them go by. They have both a consumption of both in their steps, right? That's why I thought maybe one covering everything would be better. It gets complicated. Well, it gets complicated when you have several ones too. Which one are you going to go by if there's a little discrepancy of one and the other? Okay. If we do not have this, can we issue the license? Or have we issued the license? I don't remember. Okay, so we need this in order to issue the license so she can get the state license. Okay. That's my understanding. Okay. Then to move this along, we can always amend it later. Let's strike out that no more than 64 ounces shall be served to a customer in one day. Any serving shall be you know, that whole end of that paragraph. And everything in the last sentence. Yeah. And so it doesn't include pictures. No, I'll move on. And have another paragraph at some point. Well, do we even have to refer to the state law or the state law that's there? I wouldn't think we'd have to refer to it because state law is in place. Right? As I said, the only reason I. That I included that was to identify or you know, call attention to the responsibility of right. how much a person can allow to consume. You know, if we wanted to have something, we could just say, you know, um, you know, the facility shall be subject to state law as far as. Serving requirements, or however, however legally that would be worded. I think you're right. In print. Incorporate state law into our own law, into our own ordinance. That works for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you get all that, Amanda? So you're removing the. That whole last sentence, and then facilities shall be subject to state law for serving requirements. And send it to Mr. Devine to see if he likes the wording of it. And forward revised microbrewery ordinance to Jim Devine for review, review for and approval. Change or approval. My motion. Okay. Right, one comment I'd make again is that our goal with this is, is, is twofold. One is to have an ordinance that allows them to get their facility going, but also to have an ordinance that encompasses future activity that may occur from other people. No two facilities are going to be the same in the way they approach things, I'm sure. So that's, that's some flexibility. 
Okay, so you made a motion. <coughs> Is there a second? Is there all second the motion? Are there any questions or comments? If you're talking about changing the civil <coughs> ordinance and adoption of an ordinance, I guess we ought to call a roll. Barons? Yes. Alt? Yes. Stick that? Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay, that takes care of that. Moving on to appointments. Uh, there are two appointments that are up for renewal on the ETS board, Mr. Douglas and Mr. Young, and we'll be bringing their names for about the next four meetings. At the moment, I don't know of any others. But if there are, we'll have, have them to deal with at that time. Correspondence. And a whole bunch of correspondence this month, I guess, for some reason or other, all came in here in the last few days. So I've got to open it up with all them things. One of them's addressed to the mayor. They're calling me the mayor. <laughs> Who is this from? <laughs> You've been promoted. Somebody at Comcast. <laughs> the Christmas card. <laughs> How can you beat that, huh? Our good birthday card. Happy holidays. <laughs> from UCCI looks like there's some articles in there about marijuana and other drugs. I haven't had a chance to look at it, so maybe something to go through. You can't leave yet. Okay. <laughs> he just looks like he's ready to go. <laughs> One here is something that Mr. Stacy ought to look at. Maybe he already has. But he has it. Well, I'm all board members received one of those. Yeah. All board members received one. Right, but Eric has one. No. Yep. I got it. You've seen that? Yeah, yeah this is a. Uh, the Paradigm is a company that represents a handful of pipeline companies. Um, some of those companies subscribe to Paradigm that have pipelines that travel through Quick County and they offer trainings uh, either once a year or every other year, I don't remember which. Are you going to the training? I have before a couple of times. I may not go to this one. The closest one is in King Peak, which is theater on March 4th. I've gone to several of these days. But I have a couple of copies so you can get free stuff. Yeah, you can get, you know. Ooh, you go with it. I got a I got a pair of needles pliers once. It was nice. Cool. I think I've been across the room. And of course the training thing will die before obviously. You get your get a bigger one than me. 
or cooler. <laughs> I'm actually in discussions with the pipeline company to have a tabletop exercise with the both the and future so. And one that you got there, Marvin, is to, I don't know, to somebody, or maybe it's me that's supposed to, it's an invitation to come to this. Every year we get that from them. What has got a CD that came with it. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you call it. It's, that's the last thing in the QE's into the claims. We need to get a motion to approve that. So pass it around first and then entertain a motion to approve that claim or that paying those dues. So this is what we belong to? Okay. Every year we pay the $1,500. Every year they send it back at the end of the year along with an invoice for the next year. Okay. Seems kind of goofy to me, but that's what yep. way it's been going on. I've been here eight years, and every year it's just been the same. So, just send them their check back. Yep. So that, that's that part of it. That move we pay the UCCI dues. Is a second? I'll second. A second. Call the roll, please. Parents? Yes. Oh, here. Stick yes. that? Yes. Sure? Yes. Yeah, Charlie, we know you're here. Yeah. Okay, next is claims. Move to pay the claims. Got a second. Mr. Rall, are there any questions about the claims? Other than if they're too much. <laughs> He's not commenting over there. <laughs> And we're gonna tell you questions a little bit. Okay. Can you call the roll, please. Yes. Yes. Sure. Yes. Is there any old business to come before the committee this morning? Is there any new business? <laughs> Seeing none, is there a motion to so adjourn? Mr. Sicknot, second by Mr. Rawls. Okay. All in favor aye. 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 Opposed same sign. We are adjourned. <laughs>